So we have two solutions. Solution Y is there and solution Z is there. And uh, the following tests were done on the solutions. Tests on solution Y. So this is a test which is done on solution Y. Solution Y was divided into four test tubes. For each test, there is a specific re like uh, observation and inference is there like you can you draw a conclusion. A strip of universal indicator was dipped into a first portion and it gives you a blue color solution. What does this indicate? What kind of, what is the nature of the solution? Uh, nine. So it is alkaline. And what about, because it's a, it's a universal indicator. For universal indicator, it shows a color, like the color, a different pH. So what, what you can conclude about the pH of this? Uh, nine. Nine, Nine. Usually, usually it's like 11 uh, is there, like 10, 11 range is there, but nine is like very uh, weak based. It's usually you don't have a solution of nine. For this type, you will mention a pH like 11. It's acceptable. 10, 11. Then aqueous copper two sulfate. You have an aqueous two copper two sulfate solution is there. And it give a was added to a second portion. So it give a blue precipitate. Copper two sulfate solution, which which substance they give a blue solution. If you check, these are the tests for the ions and the, the flame test or are there. So when you check the copper, so when you add Sodium hydroxide, it will first form a blue precipitate or it can form a blue, soli uh, blue solid. Means when we mix two solution, a solid is formed. We call that as a precipitate. So first when we add, if we add sodium hydroxide, it will be a blue precipitate, but this does not dissolve. Like it will form a blue solid. But if we add aqueous ammonia to copper solution, copper salts or a salt which contain a copper ion, if we add aqueous ammonia, so what, what will the result? It will form first blue precipitate, which will dissolve to give a dark blue solution. So when you check here, when we add copper to sulfate, it is forming a blue precipitate, it means blue solid. What this gives an indication, what is this substance? Is it sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia? Uh, sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, because it's giving blue precipitate, which does not dissolve in excess. If it was an aqueous ammonia, it will be blue precipitate, but it will dissolve in excess or make a deep blue solution. So here, this gives an indication that solution Y might be sodium hydroxide because if sodium hydroxide is added to copper sulfate, it will give a blue precipitate. Then a flame test was done. Like this, simply give an identification, it just give an idea that it might be, because like it might be an alkaline solution. Usually, like when we have an alkali, an alkali react with this copper ions or hydroxide ions react with a positive metal ion, it will form precipitates. So this give an idea, this is not like 100% is sodium hydroxide, give an idea, a rough idea, this give an idea that it is an alkali. This might, might be sodium hydroxide. But when you carry out a flame test, it was giving a red. So which metal is giving a red flame color? Lithium. Lithium. So as you can see, these are the flame tests. Which metal is giving a red flame color? That is lithium is there. Or calcium is also there, but it's orange red, not red. So this give an idea that it, it can be sodium hydroxide. Like this was giving an idea that it should be so it's it's like sodium hydroxide, but this flame test give an idea that it might be lithium. This indicate that is an alkaline solution or hydroxide. So what is solution Y? So solution Y contain hydroxide ion and solution Y contain a lithium ion. So what might be solution Y? If lithium combined with hydroxide, so it will be lithium hydroxide. 
So this solution Y is not sodium hydroxide, it is a lithium hydroxide. If it was a sodium hydroxide, then the flame color, it should be yellow. And when we add sulfuric acid, there is no visible change. So dilute sulfuric acid is there, so no visible change. And the test tube becomes slightly warmer. So it means an exothermic. Yeah, how we know it's in hydroxide, as you can see, a universal indicator was used and it's a blue color. It given a blue, violet, this indicates that it's an alkali. So what are alkalis? Alkalis are soluble bases, usually hydroxide. That's, that's indicate there is hydroxide. This also indicate because when copper combined with hydroxide, it will form copper hydroxide. That is a blue precipitate. And when flame test was done, this hydroxide is a lithium hydroxide. And this dilute sulfuric acid is added. There is a, because acid react with an alkali, so there is a neutralization reaction. The test tube become warm. It means which reaction is this, endo or exo? If we add sulfuric acid to solution Y, the test tube becomes slightly warmer. Is it exo? Uh, or endo? Exotherm. So this will be exothermic because that's why the test tube will feel warmer. So just a pH of the solution. So you can mention pH 11, pH 10. But 11 is like more appropriate as even it's a weak, but you will mention 11. Identify solution Y. So what is solution Y? Solution Y is lithium hydroxide. One mark is for mentioning lithium. One mark is for the hydroxide. Is it uh, clear this part? In the second part, we have solution Z, which is ammonium sulfide. Ammonium sulfide, ammonium means NH4 ion is there. Sulfate is SO4, sulfide is SO3. So ammonium sulfide is there. Complete all the ex expected observation. Solution Z was divided into three portions, into boiling tube and a test tube. Five centimeter cube of a hydrochloric acid was added to a first portion of solution Z. The mixture was warm and a piece of a filter paper soaked in acidified potassium manganate held at the mouth of a boiling tube. State the color change. Actually, this is a test for sulfide ion. If you check the sulfide purple ions here, to colorless. purple to colorless. If you check, if you have a sulfide ion, which is SO4, SO3 minus 2, when we add a small volume of acidified potassium manganate, acidified potassium manganate means like acid is there and potassium manganate and we supply the heat energy. As a result, what will happen? The potassium manganate show a color change. It will change from purple to colorless. So same thing so happened here. Yeah. Same thing happened here. You can see when hydrochloric acid is added and then like we acidify this and we add potassium manganate. So state the color change. What is the color change? It is from purple to colorless. And this usually happened. And name the gas being tested in C. Whenever we heat, which gas is given off? The gas which is given no, off? Yeah. Is no. The gas which is given off whenever sulfite ion is tested, the gas given off is sulfur dioxide. Whenever like this test is done, this is a test for sulfite ion. And when this test is done and we supply heat energy, a gas is given off. The gas which is given off is sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is an acidic gas. So name the gas tested in C that is sulfur dioxide. And you can check the test for the sulfur dioxide gas. What is the test for sulfur dioxide gas? Sulfur dioxide gas turned acidified potassium manganate from purple to colorless. So it is a reducing agent. It is a MN7, it is reduced. It is acting like an oxidizer. This is an oxidizing agent. Sulfur dioxide is a reducing yes. agent. Like 
MnO4, MnO4 is there. It form Mn plus two, in which Mn is plus seven. So it, this is reduction. And sulfur dioxide, it is oxidation happen for it. Like the product sulfur will be there. The next one, um, sodium hydroxide was added to the six, uh, second portion of Z. The mixture was warm and the gas given off was tested. Result, so if we add sodium hydroxide and we have, we already know we have ammonium sulfate. Like there is an ammonium ion, and it's four plus one is there and sulfate, sulfite ion, which is SO4 minus two. So what happened if we have a solution contain an ammonium ion if a solution contain an ammonium ion, it will produce ammonia on warming when we add sodium hydroxide. So the question is, when we add sodium hydroxide, the second portion of a solution Z, you know, the mixture was warmed and a gas was tested. So it, whenever ammonium ion is there and we add sodium hydroxide and heat, it will produce ammonia, NH3. And how we can test ammonia? How to test a result of a gas ammonia? So we will test with uh, a damp. damp litmus paper. You have to mention which red or blue? Uh, red. So we we test with a damp red litmus, and what will happen? It will turn blue. The equation for this, you have ammonium sulfite. When you add sodium hydroxide, it will produce ammonia. It will produce water. And it will produce sodium sulfide. So this ammonia we tested. So ammonium salts, when heated with alkali, they always give off ammonia. So identify the gas given off in E, that is ammonia. Then add about one cm cube of a hydrochloric acid followed by barium nitrate. This is a test for... Precipitate will form. No, but this is a test for sulfate. This is a sulfide. We don't have sulfate here. This test, adding a hydrochloric acid and barium nitrate, is a test for SO4 ion, sulfate ion. But we don't have sulfate, we have sulfide. So sulfide, when we add barium nitrate or a barium chloride, if there was a sulfate ion, it will give a white precipitate. But with sulfide, there will be no visible change. So answer if here. If it was SO4, barium if, if was, sulfate. Yeah, if it was SO4, barium sulfate form, it will be white precipitate. But in this case, observation, there will be no visible change. Why there is no visible change? Because it's not a sulfate ion, it's a sulfite ion. 